Hi, my name is Andy, and on today's video, we're going to change the oil on my 2014 Tundra. This is pretty easy, pretty straightforward, so let's get started. All right, for our oil change, we're going to want to, I, I like to use the, the Toyota kit. Um, here's the part number for it, and I, I what I like about it is it comes with everything I'm going to need to change the oil, gaskets, the filter, the essential parts for this oil change. Um, and then the last thing that, that doesn't come in the kit, I wish they would include, uh, is a crush ring for the drain bolt. Um, and here I just have a couple of them. And uh, so we'll use one of those, we'll use this kit. And then for oil right now, I'm using this in my truck. Um, everybody's gonna have their different flavor that they like, but we're gonna need, it says 7.9 quarts uh, of oil. Um, so we'll just call it eight. These are two five quart jugs. So we'll use just a little bit more than one and a half of these. So let's get started. All right, the first three we're gonna to wanna to take off are these three here on the bottom of the bumper. They're attached to the skid plate that we need to get out of the way, but first let's get these ones. Okay, now that those three 10 millimeters are out, we're gonna switch this over to a 12 millimeter and we're gonna get the five bolts that hold the skid plate on. So we have two up here in these two holes and then in these three holes here, we have the rest of the 12 millimeter bolts. Okay, now to get this tray off, there are hooks up inside here and they're just kind of a hook shape. So you're gonna lift the tray up and kind of swing it over to the, to the side a little bit and it should just come right out. Now we're gonna use a 14 millimeter and take off this drain bolt. Make sure you got an oil pan underneath so you can catch all the oil. All right, now that this is pretty much done draining, this is the crush ring that's stuck onto the oil pan. We wanna go ahead and get that off. The screwdriver. You can see the screwdriver marks on here from previous oil changes. You just kinda of, kinda of pop it off there. When you put the drain plug back in, Make sure you put the new crush ring on the drain plug. And it's okay that it's still dripping a little bit. We're not gonna get every drop of oil out of here, which is fine. We'll just tighten this up. You don't need to over tighten this. This doesn't need to be NASA tight, just good and snug. And then while we're here, we'll just go ahead and wipe off any XX oil off the bottom here so it doesn't get everything else all greasy and dirty underneath the engine bay. Okay, from here, we're gonna move over to the oil filter. There's a couple things we're gonna do here. We're gonna take this seal off, this, this bottom plug here, and it's just use the end of a extension on your 3 8 ratchet wrench and just break that free. And from here, we're gonna have a tool, the tool that comes, that little plastic tool that comes in the kit, we're gonna use and drain the oil filter. So here's that piece. And we're just going to put it up inside here and it's going to release a valve and it's just going to drain the oil outside of out of the, the filter so we can get everything out of it before we take the housing off and by doing this this will just make less of a mess when we take this housing off to get that filter changed now that we're going to take this piece off there's a couple different tools that you can use this one actually is a toyota uh, uh, oil filter housing remover there's different styles of the same thing. Some of them have little tab cutouts that go around these flanges here. Uh, this one I just went ahead and ordered from Toyota and it fits on there just right. All right, if you put these things on there too tight, you're gonna crack the plastic. Just like I have here, this is the plastic edges of the filter housing that is not something you wanna break. So now, because of my last oil change, I over tightened this. Now I get to buy a new one of these housings and I'll probably go after the other uh, wrench tool that fits around the uh, the housing more tightly. There's, there's some cutouts to fit deeper onto this. So now I get to buy one of those. Don't make that mistake, guys. <laughs> All right, I just spent a bunch of time explaining the new, <laughs> the new oil filter tool. And then while I was showing it, I further broke this and all that didn't realize that the camera wasn't on. So let's start over. Um, so I ordered a different filter remover tool. In fact, I ordered two of them just in case. This one has deeper 
deeper part, you know, so you can reach in here and, and grab those tabs that are way down there. Although I just broke that tab off, so I don't know if this is gonna do me any good anymore. This is the tab that I just broke off. And what I had done is I had put the new filter uh, tool, I put it up here and I was using a big old breaker bar and just turning it and I just snapped that piece off there. These aren't broken yet, but I bet you they're not far from it. And uh, so now, and then a little bit of oil was pouring out of this little, this little crack that I made now. Now this thing is completely destroyed. Not only is this gone, but now the tabs that these things grab onto is broken. So I'm going to put a piece of paper in here and see if I can get a real tight fit around this. And I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna use the impact wrench and I'm gonna give one last go and see if I can break this plastic piece free. Um, this is, this is an, a direct result of tightening this oil filter housing cap being this just way too tight. I think it's only supposed to be like 18 foot pounds or something like that. Uh, and I, it's just clearly over tightened. So let's see if we can get this put on here and, and see if an impact wrench will do the job to get this piece off. Alright guys, uh, we got really really lucky here. Putting this piece of paper in between the tool soaked up that little bit of difference that the, the cap was slipping on and I probably should have started with that. I might not have broken that, that tab that's busted right there. But anyways, okay so from here definitely we're going to have to replace this this housing piece. And then you what we're going to buy is a, a aluminum unit. We're not going to put another plastic one in there. About 30 bucks for, for one of those. So let's get that guy put together and put it in here. Alright, here's the housing that I had taken off that I had busted, the pieces that I busted off the edge, and then ultimately the, the tab busted off the side and why it broke and why I had to replace it with a new unit. Uh, I would not recommend this tool. Um, well, it is a Toyota filter remover. I would recommend you know either one like this or one like this. Uh, so you can get this down there and, and get it to fit around the tabs and it much better feel but really what you should do is not over over tighten this down when you're installing it the new unit this is the part number uh, for the new housing and this one is aluminum so this one not only will i not over tighten this but this one should be a little more resistant to, to, to cracking and breaking in the filter kit that we we had from earlier we want to put on the new O-ring and we'll just take a little bit of oil and just kind of grease up the, the O-ring a little bit and that helps make it install a little easier and then also when you put it in the truck it doesn't the O-ring doesn't catch on the on the housing the oil housing part where this goes in There's a groove for it to fit in here, so that fits in nice. And then we can put the, the new cartridge on there, and now this is ready to install. Actually, you don't want to forget this piece here. This needs to get put. You need to save this from the old housing to put in the new one, and you need to put the O-ring on this one as well. So same thing, we'll just grease it up a little bit. Just press that on there. back on and tighten it down okay now this guy's ready to go back in the truck okay well, first thing we'll do is we'll just thread this in by hand and thread it all the way in until it stops um, by hand and then you can put it on with the wrench and you feel it bottom out. Okay, now that's where it stops. This is where we're gonna put the tool on and finish it with, with the tool. Now 
there. Does not does not take much to get it to that 18 foot pounds. This thing over tighten that, and you'll have problems down the road. Okay, now this is tight. This is tight. Before we put the oil in, let's put the tray back on the skid plate. So again, that there's these little hooks on here that go up inside these slots, and then slide it to the side. Make sure you lift the bumper out of the way so you can put those up there. All right, now that we've got all five of those bolts in, we can go in and just tighten them all up and secure the skid plate. All right, the last three we have to put underneath here are just to hold the bumper to the skid plate with these guys using a 10 millimeter. All right, the last piece of this puzzle is to just go ahead and fill the motor back up with oil. And we're gonna use uh, 7.9 quarts of this, so that's gonna be all of one of these, and then we'll put in uh, three quarts of the other, of the next one. Now when you overfill this too fast, it pours out the side and makes a mess everywhere. Okay, and that does it. So now we got eight quarts of oil in there. Secure the cap and you're good to go. All right, so that's an oil change in a 2014 and newer Toyota Tundra. Uh, hopefully you won't struggle with the same problems I had with the oil filter housing. Uh, if you don't over tighten it, it probably won't be an issue for you but you can always get that aluminum piece if you're ever concerned about that being an issue. So it takes care of that. Uh, next thing is to, uh, to just go drive the truck. So thanks for sticking with me. We'll see you in the next one.